What's up guys, welcome back to Antics Garage. I'm Sam. And I'm Brad. This go around, we are going to do a shop upgrade project involving our sound system. This old boom box just isn't cutting it anymore. No. So today we are going to build a rat rod inspired jukebox sound system thing out of an old welder, some leftover plywood, and some really cheap Amazon sound equipment. So stay tuned and check it out. This old welder, which was given to me when an uncle of mine passed away, I took it apart, I tried to salvage it. It was pretty corroded on the inside. The leads were completely shot. And I was gonna try to fix it, but it was just a little bit too far gone to mess with but I thought it's too cool I gotta keep it and use it for something so I kept this outer shell of it this chunk right here is going to be the genesis of our rat rod jukebox so these are basically the guts and brains of the jukebox is a couple of the things that we're going to be using first thing we've got a pair of the four and a half inch two-way speakers and this thing here is a eight inch subwoofer this is going to give us like the bass and just where the music is at basically. the oomph the oomph yes and this is a 2.1 amplifier board this is kind of the brains of the machine so basically what that means is it gives 50 watts per channel to the speakers and it gives 100 watts to the subwoofer. So that's yes. basically what all these things are. So now you know what we're working with. Yes. Oh, another cool thing about this. Uh, it's Bluetooth as well. So we can wirelessly Hook connect to, to it. So. phone or computer. Or... And it was all very cheap. So I have no idea what we're getting into. Who but knows? we're going to find out together. Exactly. We kind of want this thing to look like, a, you know, some old tractor or the grill off an old car or something that rat rod aesthetic which we both really dig and i didn't want to just stick speakers in here i thought it would look weird i wanted it to look a little bit more finished than that so we decided to plasma cut a grill for it um i'll cut to some footage of us at antics garage west cnc plasma cutting that grill so check that out right now Okay, so after drawing everything in Adobe Illustrator, exported that as a DXF, brought it into our Plasma Cam cutting software, uh, got everything cut files are ready to go. So next thing to do is just start chopping. All right, Sam, you ready to get this thing fired up? Yes. <laughs> you, you look. You look really official with you the look gloves. Very official with the gloves. Okay, fire it up, dude. Thingies. So he's just selecting the stuff we want to cut. And there we go. look sweet so we get these parts ground down and cleaned up a little bit this should go somewhere around here nice yeah yeah okay we got our parts cut fresh off the press and now we're gonna see what it looks like on the welder 
Let's see if she fits. I hope it fits. Dude. That literally could not be more perfect. <laughs> That's gonna look awesome. I knew it would fit perfectly because I have 100% faith that my measurements are 70% accurate at least 50% of the time. Okay, this uh, thin steel is a terrible thing to make a speaker box out of. We are going to make it out of, actually, if you want to pan over here, this is going to be another low buck thing. I've got a pile of salvaged and leftover plywood. So that will be what's actually housing the stuff. And then this welder case will just be kind of a shroud to go over the top of it. Um, in order to do that, we're going to have to cut a big section of this out and then we'll just slip this over our wooden box. We'll have to drill some holes to screw everything together, but it well, looks something better. sort of kind of like that. How's it going in there, Sam? It's like my own personal house. Okay, so according to the paperwork that we got from our high-end $17 subwoofer. Nothing but the best. Nothing but the best. It says that um, we need about a .9 cubic foot sealed box. That would be easy to do if we were making something like this from scratch. But being that we're trying to fit this into this, we're going to have to do a little bit of math and see how that can work out. Hey, math on a weekend. Can't beat I it. I know he might need to do that. Okay, okay, after we figured out what these two sides were, we also needed to figure out about where to put the divider. So in order to do that, we need to figure out how many cubic inches we're in and a that was about 1,728 cubic it's inches, .9, which got us 1555.2. This so times this times what number? So 14.75 times 2.75. Then we took that number, which got us the height. That probably didn't make sense, but that is the algebraic way of explaining things at Antics Garage anyways. It's almost as if it was meant to be for this thing to become a woofer box because after doing all that crazy math, we figured out that the divider is going to be about right in this area. And that is literally perfect in our range for this, where this eight inch woofer is gonna be. So not only will it be placed correctly in there, but it will be the perfect dimensions for that box. That was just a freaky accident. I, I couldn't have planned it that way. Somehow long. it worked in our favor, yep. which is amazing. Yeah. Okay, we got our pieces cut out for the box. And since this is going to be covered up completely by the welder and the the grill thing we don't need to do any fancy joinery we're just gonna glue it and nail it screw it together it ain't got to be pretty it's just got to be functional nails are kind of temporary glue more glue What have you guys been up to? Huh? Tim, we just want to talk.
Finito. Kind of fitted like glove. Speaker, 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 amplifier, grill. Okay, normally in this case, when we're trying to cut out perfect circular holes, we would use our router to do that, which you saw that in our cajon video, we kind of cut around it, but these circles are too small. So we're just gonna do it the old fashioned way with a jigsaw. Yeah. Shocked. Ah! All right, we're feeding wires. Trying to feed wires. Attempting to feed wires from the inside of the box up through these holes because the amplifier will end up sitting somewhere in this area. And that'll give us good access to plug everything in. So, this is not the right tool for the job, but I can't find my heat gun. Kids, don't try this at home. How was your first heat shrink experience? It was pretty nice. good. So, we're going to cut out some plywood spacers to put up here so that way this thing is little ways back so that when we put it on the grill it's not so close and there's just a little bit of space between those so we're just putting on the spacers and the way to do that just put on some glue and nails and you're good to go nothing fancy top part of this stamped steel was a different shape it bumped in a little bit more but that thing's just getting in our way so I'm just gonna cut it off we're just gonna hit this with a quick coat of black here so when it's visible through the grill we don't want to see plywood we want it to all just kind of blend in with the black speakers <clears throat> now you'll never see most of this but we'll know it's there right yes he lost his eye in combat <laughs> these are almost impossible to screw up but never underestimate me I can screw things up. Get on there. There we go. Well, this amplifier, one of the cool things about it is that it runs anywhere from 12 to 24 volts DC. So you can run it with a wide variety of power supplies. The cool thing is, since it runs 12 to 24 volts, you could even run it off of like a drill battery. You know, most drill batteries are 18 to 20 volts, something like that. So you could make a portable version of this that could run battery power. But we're going to run it with just like, it's basically like a laptop type power supply. This outputs 24 volts DC. So that'll give this little amp board its maximum amount of oomph. I'm going to stumble around like a caveman here for a couple minutes and try to figure this thing out. <clears throat> because the directions are not super duper helpful. Well, technically, the person who wrote them, English was not their primary language. Well, this isn't a Sony or a Bose or anything like that. It's a Shinzen Yima. Only the best of the best right. for our projects. That is right. That woofer's doing its magic. Yes. Now, <clears throat> this has a built-in crossover, so basically it blocks all the high frequencies out here, 
and blocks all the low frequencies out up here and it's adjustable but I have no idea how to do it so that's the next task is figure out how to tune this crossover a little bit let me go up to some higher frequencies here and see what she does whoa it likes 88 Getting it dialed in pretty good. Let's see what we got here. Went back up to the little It works so well. There's no way you could go to Best Buy. You probably couldn't spend two hundred dollars at Best Buy and get a Bluetooth speaker that sounds as good as this thing does. And we did it for like less than a hundred. Oh yeah, way less. Way less. And it's not even done yet. Just wait till it looks cool. Now it just sounds cool. Exactly. That's the next step. We figured this looked a little too new for our rat rod theme. So we're gonna try to age it down a little bit. And we were thinking maybe a rust finish. Now you're probably thinking to yourself, does rust take a long time to form? The answer is, No. That's right. All it takes is a little bit of heat. We, we etched the surface with muriatic acid. And then you heat it up a little bit, just with a propane torch or something. Squirt some hydrogen peroxide on it, and boom, bam, instant rust. Here's the results of our science experiment. Looks much older. Wow. Looks pretty sweet. It looks pretty amazing. The screws work good. They're kind of... Yes. They don't stick out real bad. Small head and then with the countersink, they're relatively flush with the... Close enough. I don't want it to look too good because it is a rat rod after all. Yeah, that's what we say. Whenever we're thinking we might make a mistake with something, we just say it's a rat rod. All right. All right, Sam's getting the amplifier firmly attached to our new crusty grill. All right, Sam's got the knobs put on. The knobs are uh, really pretty awful <laughs> quality. Just this middle one. Yeah, seems like the other four stick. They're just kind of flopping around, but we might make a knob upgrade in the future. But finishing touch. We decided to kind of polish this one up a little bit to have a nice contrast with the rust. This is the El Finito finishing touch. And I only get one shot at this because this double stick tape uh, will never Very ever, sticky. ever come off. And that wraps it up. Thank you so much for watching. We really enjoyed working on this project. It sounds as cool as it looks. Yeah, it sounds great. Now, is it the best sounding Bluetooth audio system? Probably not. But is it the coolest looking, best bang for the buck? Definitely, by Heck a long shot. Yes. If you guys already haven't seen our last video, make sure you click up here so you don't miss out on that. And if you'd like to check out some of our future projects that we'll do, Make sure you click up there and subscribe so that we don't miss out on any of that. Otherwise, thanks again for watching. We'll see you guys next time. See ya.